Visit CCG Castle .com and get 5% discount on your purchase with TCG Center 5 code. Check read the description or visit CCG Castle for more. Hello and welcome back to Pokemon TCG Center. Today's video will be looking at Primal Clash on um, deck. So basically this is my version of Zorark Escadrille with Evolution line. So I should say that this is a some kind of mid-budget deck uh, that can also be very very competitive. And uh, in my opinion, this is very good tweak the deck. So basically, I will first start uh, with the uh, amount of the cards in this deck. So I'm running 19 Pokemons, 31 Trainer card, and 10 Energies. Uh, the secondly is uh, most important, those uh, Evolutions, of course. So if, as you can see, um, I have Jolteon, uh, Flareon, and Vaporeon with two Eevees in this deck. So uh, why? Uh, just because uh, both my attackers, Zorark and Escadrille, are actually stage 1 Pokemons. Uh, Escadrille can hit twice with the Barrage, and basically Zorark can hit with the Mind Jack for 10 plus 30 for each of your opponent Pokemon on the bench. So let's say your opponent have 5 Pokemons on bench, you can hit for 160 with a Double Chorus, which will not be enough to one-hit knock up to your opponent EX if, if he is like 180, but Giovanni's Scheme will help in that, but uh, more about that later. And of course, um, uh, it, it, either way, your Zorak will be um, also lighting uh, fire or a water type, depend on the evolution type you choose actually to put into play. So that's very important because you can also hit for the weakness just in case if your opponent is actually weak to any of these uh, types. So basically you can hit for five different weakness with this deck. You can hit for darkness, uh, fire, water, lighting or metal. Speak about uh, Escadrille, uh, basically why Escadrille is good in this deck. So let's say you play against uh, Mega Skeptile, and Mega Skeptile is, I think, 220 HP. So if you want to one-hit knockout Mega Skeptile, you can use twice Bar uh, Magiclove for 50. And basically, if you hit twice uh, with Flareon in play, that's going to be 100 plus 100, which is 200. And of course, with Giovanni's game, you can increase the damage for 20 more, so you can one-hit knockout Mega um, Skeptile, so he is not able to recover from that damage and also heal. So in my opinion, that's very good. And also having two copies of Octillery, if you're able to put one in play, that's very good advantage because um, even if your opponent and you down to one or two cards, you can always use a Bizzle Hand to draw cards so you have five in your hand. So definitely N cannot um, disrupt you, but it can definitely disrupt your opponent because Octillery, in my opinion, is just a very good card in those um, budget non-EX decks. And yeah, that's pretty much the strategy of this deck. So basically with the Escort Drill you can hit twice, with Zorak you can stand in and hit with, for the Mind Jack. It really depends on the situation for how many damage you need to hit. Also you can take maybe a single line of the Waste Queen in this deck, because Waste Queen can also hit for a lot of damage and having Jolteon, Flareon, over Polarion in play, it can also add a more damage counters because hitting just for the single double cover synergy can do a crazy damage. As you can see from item cards, I'm running uh, also two copies of Level Wall. It's very important to have as many resources to drop your Pokémons because we have like uh, four different evolutions right there. We have Zork, we have Escadrille, we have one of the evolution line, and of course Octillery. So uh, having a lot, uh, having a lot of uh, resources to actually set up on your turn one is very important with this deck. So that's the reason why I'm also running two Level Balls. Having also four copies of Ultra Balls will allow me to discard any two cards from my hand in order to search my deck for any Pokémon. I decide to roll with the Ultra Ball. I could just simply go with four Level Balls and two Heavy Balls, but sometimes it's actually better to throw up some uh, unnecessary cards from your hand, like a Wally, N, or maybe Lysander, Giovanni Scheme, Hex Maniac, so you can actually um, put them into your discard pile and actually with uh, a Bezel hand drop some extra fresh cards. So in my opinion, that's a very good combo. Also, having one Super Oat is must need in this deck. Uh, same as having four copies of Trainer's Mail. Uh, because, in my opinion, four copies of Trainer's Mail is very important to this deck, so you can actually get through your deck as quick as you can and grab any item card or trainer card that can actually help you. Same as having four copies of V-Seeker, so you can actually constantly play those um, supporter cards. The reason why I actually play V-Seeker in this deck, even if it's a budget build, is just because if you're new to the game, if you want to be competitive in building a budget deck, you need to have at least three copies of V-Seeker in your deck. That's just the most important thing. I guess in the current meta. And also from item cards I'm running two copies of floatstones just for the free retreat with my Zorark and also for the artillery in case I stuck with it. And of course from stadium card I decided to run two copies of Silent Lab 
many players these days actually plays those shamans, and I guess Silent Lab is just perfect for this deck. If you start first, you can actually play Stadium like a Silent Lab. If your opponent does not have Stadium and Shaman for the turn one setup, he can just uh, look at you and uh, you can smile to him, and basically he will not be able to play the Shaman for the setup. So I guess. Silent Lab is definitely very good. Um, the only thing that actually concerned me, um, it, it's definitely Garbador. But the good thing is that basically with S Control you can one hit knock of your opponent Garbador, same as with the Zorak. So those Dark Rays are actually not safe in my opinion. Basically, um, also as the Giratinas. But uh, more about that later. But also one card that needs to be also tagged in this deck for the future when we actually get Steam Siege released. It's definitely going to be that um, trick... Uh, uh, what's the name? Uh, Pokemon Ranger, of course. And that new card, I cannot remember the name, who can actually give you uh, to shuffle two of your item cards back into... Uh, two of your special energy cards back into your deck. So from supporter cards, I also have one Bridget. Um, it's good. If you can hit Bridget turn 1, it's good. If you cannot, maybe in a middle or late game it can also help, but the Bridget is basically for the turn 1, so you can actually set up as much as you can, so you can actually search a deck for any 3 basic Pokemon and put them onto your bench. Also, one tech card as a Giovanni skin can increase the damage for 20. Very good card. Also, you can draw cards that have 5 in your hand, um, but I guess you don't want to use that. A uh, single Hex Maniac to shut down all abilities in play, it's good because sometimes you actually want to shut down those abilities. You never know, you might be playing against Greninja, and actually if you play against Greninja you need to have Hex Maniac in your deck. But you never know, also having turn 1 or turn, turn 2 Hex Maniac just to shut down your opponent's chance to set up with the Shaman uh, is very important. Because once you actually use all of your abilities like a Stand-In and a Bezel Hand and if you don't need any of your evolutions if, or if you don't have any of your evolutions in play you can actually shut down your opponent's abilities with a Hex Maniac so I guess it's very good and very um, powerful card to have in deck. Also one copy of Life Center, 6 drop supporters, uh, 7 if we count Giovanni's game, 2 ends and 4 Sycamores, pretty much standard in my decks. Two copies of Wally. Wally is very important in this deck, so because basically you can search your deck turn one, maybe for um, level ball for Emeride and then Wally into Octillery, so you can have uh, a Beazle hand on your turn one. But you can also have turn one Zorak with a double core synergy, and you can surprise your opponent by hitting hard. So, in my opinion, having two Wally is just good. But also for the mid and late game. Um, for example, if you have Dribbloom on your bench and you don't have the resource like. Uh, a level ball or something like that, you can just actually go with uh, uh, Wally, v for Wally, and you can have evolution in play without any problem. Um, not the evolution, any, yeah, any evolution card, not the evolution card. Of course, um, four copies of double core synergies. Uh, both attackers like uh, Escadrille and Zora can use those special energies to attack. And of course, having six metal energies, you need to have some other resource to attack. You never know uh, when you can uh, be low on the fuel. So I guess uh, it's also good because Reg can actually allow you to search your deck for two energy cards, attach them to uh, Escadrille, and then you can one time, one more time, use your Match Glow for like 50 and uh, hit your opponent for 50. So that's very important because Barash says that you can use twice attack, two attacks, or double the same attack with your Escadrille. So in my opinion, that's very important and you need to have at least six metal energies in your deck. So, as usual, if you're looking for any of these cards, you can find them on ccgcastle.com. Um, if you're new to the store, you can get 5% discount on your purchase by typing TCG Center 5 code. We also get some PSA graded cards, so also you can check that. And you can find the link in my video description, so definitely don't miss to uh, check that. So, let's move to the game test so you can actually see how this deck works in the real game. Alright, guys, let's do this. So... My opponent will start first. That means that I have actually a chance on my turn one to attack. But uh, probably that's not going to happen. So I'm thinking about what should I put in the active spot. And I guess that Eevee is the better than Remorite because I want to preserve my Remorite for Octillery. Um, seeing those Garchomp sleeves. I can probably um, think that he might play that um, Garchomp deck. So in this situation I will not need Eevee because Garchomp is weak on the grass. So I'm going to put my Remoraid on the bench 
I have level ball in my hand. Oh, there's a Lucario, so it's not. It's actually something worse than uh, Garchomp. That Lucario is just a absolutely beast uh, when we spoke about uh, my deck. So there's even Focus Ash, but on the carving, and uh, actually Lysander, uh, my Remorite, and passes the turn. So very nice top deck. I will respond with my Silent Lab. I will search my deck for another Remorite, probably, because there is a big chance that I'm going to lose this one in the active spot on the next turn. So I'm going to play my Sycamore for 7. So all he really needs is just a single energy, and uh, my Remorite is going to be in knock it out. So this does not look good. Come on, give me something like Ultra Ball. Okay, and one more trainer's mail. Four, let's see, a oh, Bridget. I guess I don't need Bridget anymore, so I will actually Ultra Ball right here for Giovanni Scheme and Bridget, so I can take one of my uh, Drill Burrs, put them on the bench. So I can actually have um, Escadrille next turn before I actually decide to go with my N. And that N is definitely going to help my opponent more than it's going to help me, because if he don't have supporter, he will definitely take some advantage. So there's a Fighting Stadium and a Missile Jab for 30. Hmm. So right now I would like to sit and cry about playing N on this turn, but I guess I don't have another option, so let's go with the N. Okay, there is Octillery, there is another Zorua, there is Zoroark, which is good, and also that Super Road, but I don't have anything of it. I will play my Zorua on the bench, and I will go with my Abyssal Hand. So what can I get with the Beazle Hand, Silent Lab? But no need to play it, I guess. So Ultra Ball, no needed. Or maybe I can actually play Ultra Ball and... Um, maybe grab another Zorark actually for the next turn. So, I will pass the turn for now. There is no sense to just uh, stand in and hit for 40, because uh, his uh, Lucario is able to knock me out, and uh, I will just wait to, to wait for my opponent actually to put more um, of Pokemons to his bench, so I can actually then just uh, respond with my Azorak with the stand-in. So there is Ultra Ball, so probably he's going to search his deck for one more Lucario, so that's definitely good, because as more Pokemons as he have on his bench uh, will increase the damage that I can do with my Zorark. So right now I can hit for 3, 6, 9, 12, 130. A lot of damage. Um, let's just promote that Escadrille into the active spot. So there is Zorark number 2. And there is even a V Seeker in my hand. I'm going first to play my Abyssal Hand, actually, and see what I can get right there. Um, Jolteon and a Floatstone. None of these two cards are actually good, so I'm going to play my... I'm going to play my N, just because I need a Super Road for later. And let's see what I can hit with N right there. So, another Drill Burr and double core synergy and the question is with who I actually want to attack right there and uh, there is no doubt that I want to attack with my Escadrille because my Escadrille could actually survive uh, my opponent Lucario corks to a smash for 80 so if he wants to knock out my Escadrille he needs to add one more energy to use that somersault kick and this is going to happen and there is even Muscle Band and a Focus Sash. So Somersault Kick for the Knockout, 120. 
I guess I buy some time right here so I can actually uh, knock him out right now with my Zorark. But before I do that, let me just see what I have left in my deck for that level ball. Um, pretty much nothing useful. So I'm going to attach me uh, Metal Energy onto my Zoroark and I'm going to play my uh, Beazle Hand for 2. Alright, so I'm forced to use my Mind Jack and I don't want to waste N on this turn so I will just knock out my opponent um, right now just because on the next turn, if he put more Pokemons on the bench, I might be able actually to one-hit knockout his um, Lucario. So, with a single energy right here, he can actually missile jab my um, Zorak, that's for sure. And again, I'm in a big trouble. But if he somehow put two more basic Pokemons on his bench, um, then I can actually one hit knock out his Lucario for 180 with my with my actually um, Giovanni scheme, but no, he just decided to hit for 100. That muscle band is just too much, so I'm going to promote my Jolteon because it have free retreat. There is Drill Burr, um, there is a Float Stone, so I'm going to attach it. I'm going to play my Abyssal Hand right there for two. Alright, so there is Escadrill. And there is um, N or Sycamore. That's the good question. N or Sycamore. That's the good question. If I end him down to three, there is a way bigger chance that he might not take anything but then again I'm taking also a big risk right there so he is down to three cards I'm going to put my Vaporeon actually Flareon in play so I can hit for the 50 right there if of course I have two energies but I have so hitting for 50 right there is a pretty decent amount of damage if you ask me because on the next turn actually I can just uh, hit for uh, 120 with my uh, with my Zorark so it will not be enough it will not be enough to one hit knock out that uh, Lucario, but at least it's tons of damage. So um, there is Corkscrew Smash, and uh, he is going to take three cards. So I'm thinking about. Oh, so he actually just decided to quit. Probably he just realized that I'm going to maybe end him and that this match will not end uh, in his favor because losing another Lucario would just probably left him without the attacker. So let's move to the game number two. Okay guys, let's do this. So I'm going to call heads and I'm going to start secondly, probably because my opponent actually played water deck and uh, I assumed that he played that Greninja break and uh, my opening hand no basic, yep, it is Greninja break on the other side. So uh, with Greninja break deck you probably have like six uh, basic Pokemons and uh, getting um, basic uh, might be a pain in the butt, but on the other side I'm running 9 and I actually got uh, two opening hands uh, without a basic Pokemon, so let's see another one, so a third was actually a luck, I managed to grab that Eevee, I actually have that Bridget, which is a very good start for me I guess, so uh, my opponent started with the Rembrandt, so if he wants to retreat he needs to find a Float Stone, and there's a random receiver, Doop, 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 for the Lysander, okay, not bad. Professor's Leather, um, for two Water Energies, of course. Uh, will he be able to find one Froakie, put it down to the bench? No, looks like no. Looks like no. Water Energy attached to the Remorite. Hmm, this is very badly. I'm going to play my Bridget. 
for these three bad boys, put them on the bench. Of course, attach double course onto Zerua, play my silent lab, go with the trainer's mail for um, Sycamore, and of course what I'm going to do is I'm going to play my Hex Maniac, but I cannot actually play Hex Maniac, I totally forget that I played Bridget already. Um, getting Hex Maniac this turn would also be the good thing, because if he had that artillery, he will not be able to get that Abyssal Hand. So, there's a Great Ball um, for Froki, so actually he saves the day with that uh, Great Ball. Great Ball says that you can search your deck, look at the top 7 cards of your deck, reveal a Pokemon you find there, put it into your hand. So, he revealed that Froki and he put it on the bench. Very interesting play with a Great Ball. Um, there's a Froki, so I will assume that there is also Wally in his hand maybe, and uh, no, it's a Evasota for that Octillery. He still need water energy and uh, something like uh, water energy and uh, volley, volley and water energy and he decided to bubble me. Okay, I'm paralyzed. There is Escadrill, there is Octillery. So what I really need right here is not too much. I guess Zorark and the Giovanni scheme, but that's not going to happen. So there is another Sycamore. And there are two level balls. So the first one is of course for another Drillbur, or maybe even yeah, for the Drillbur. And I'm going to play my Ultra Ball. Ultra Ball actually for a, a Zorark, so I can stand in and do some damage. Unfortunately, I played another Eevee on my bench. Um, maybe at some point of the game, I actually um, lost my Zorark, and getting Jolteon in play is good because it has free retreat. So uh, there is a Mind Jack for 40. Not a lot of damage, unfortunately. So let's see what my opponent can do. But also, the good thing is about Eevees on the bench against Ranger Break, um, definitely the thing that your opponent might uh, just uh, play those John Water Shurikanes on those Eevees. So I also put them an, uh, on the bench as a um, trap for my opponent because if I can preserve my Escadrilles and Zoraks with the full HP, I can definitely take some advantage. So that's just my opinion. Oh, just a single Frogadier from my opponent. Oh, that's just bad. Let's see if I can find something like... Uh, well, something like a Jolteon, but I was not looking for that. Let's go with a Sycamore for 7. I'm looking for the Floatstone. So I can actually retreat and uh, hit with my... Escadrill uh, for that match glow for 50, knock out his frog uh, Frogadier and then force him to uh, promote one another um, Pokemon from his bench into the active spot and probably he's going to promote his Frogadier so I can uh, put 50 more damage counters on it and this is very important because if he put that Greninja in play and, for example, one more of his Pokemons on the bench, I can actually just knock out that Greninja with my Zorak, because I also have my Giovanni scheme sitting and ready in my hand. But uh, so far, he can hit maximum 400 with the Muscle Band, and I will assume that that's, that's not going to happen for him. So, a very bad luck uh, for that turn 1 Remoraid, and of course, very bad luck for him um, for not being able to get more Frogadiers than just a single one on his uh, bench with that water duplicate. And there's a Lysander for that Eevee, so at least he can knock out that Eevee. As I spoke earlier about it. And there's a Dive Ball, so probably for another Froki. So let's see. Will he take another Froki? Yes, he take another Froki. And uh, that will actually, oh, actually have some beast flying over me right here. Um, so he actually decided to took one Froki. 
on his bench, that means that I can increase the damage that I can done with my um, Zorark. And there is another Dive Ball, so will there be another Froki? No, just a Greninja Break, but uh, he cannot survive this without healing the damage off from his Greninja, that's for sure. He's probably going to Shadow Snitch me right there. Uh, because he probably wants to uh, preserve that Greninja with that Splash energy. Um, no, he decided to Moonlight Slash. Oh, actually, duh. Yeah, interesting. Very interesting. So I'm going to promote my Escadrille. And I can hit twice right there for enough damage. And I will definitely do that. So I don't even need to play my Giovanni scheme. I don't want to waste any of my resources for now. So I'm just going to knock out that Greninja. And actually, uh, he will put it back into his hand. I totally realized that he just hit for the 60. My mistake, guys. There is another Remoraine, which is good. So I'm in good position right there, definitely. Um... I have Giovanni's scheme sitting in my hand, that means that I can uh, one-hit knockout one of his um, Frokies, maybe even Frogadier, and to force him to promote again another um, Pokemon in his active spot, so uh, he can definitely try to paralyze me, but that's not going to work because I have Floatstone on my Zorak, so I can actually just stand in retreat, maybe tiny misplay, I don't know. So let's see, he had that Frogadier on the bench. I should call that as a misplay. So there's a Lysander, and he can try to Lysander my another Escadrille. Uh, but to be honest, he should definitely try to Lysander my Zorark and try to paralyze him, because that was the only chance that he could actually get one turn right here to be able to actually evolve into Greninja. And I don't even need to um, stand in. I will just play my Giovanni scheme for 20 more damage. I will put on the bench that Remorite. And then I'm going to use my Match Clove for 70, of course, which is enough to knock out that um, Froki. I can take one more price. And I can even hit one more of his Benched Pokémon, so let's see what he's going to promote. Probably Remorite, so another Match Glow for 50, actually for 70, totally uh, mismatched that Giovanni scheme. So twice 70, two prizes in the single turn, and he just stay with his Artillery and with that Greninja. Uh, definitely if he can get that Greninja break in play, he can do a lot of problems to me. Even with a single Greninja break, he can do a lot of problems, so I just need to uh, get somehow chance to Lysander his Greninja uh, on the bench. There is Water Energy and Wally for a Greninja break, of course. And right now he can do a lot of damage, but of course that Greninja needs to be in the active spot, so there's a Beazle Hand for one. Alright, so it's my turn. What I'm going to do right here, first I'm going to clean some of the cards from my hand, just to see what else I have left in my deck. I see the Lysander, so that's the good sign. I'm going to play another Ultra Ball, pretty much for nothing, so I can actually get a Beazle Hand for three. Alright, so three trainers mail. One of them might be that one is a V Seeker, I can definitely use it. Let's see what is another card. It's just another V Seeker, so I guess it's worth to take one more V Seeker. And let's see the last trainers mail today. Another V Seeker. So I guess I have poker of V Seekers in my hand. And uh, I can definitely Hex Maniac my opponent Greninja. 
I guess this is the best option that I can do right here. I can choose between multiple supporter cards and multiple VA Seekers in my hand. So I can hit for 100 with my Match Glove. It's enough to knock out his artillery. The good thing is right now that he cannot use his John Water Shuriken, which means that he cannot knock out my Escadrille. And I don't know how he can actually win right now, because that Hex Maniac actually does his job right now, and uh, he can try, definitely. There's a Rough Seas, um, which means that I cannot respond on his Rough Seas, so at least he can heal 30 damage at the end of this turn. Then again, I have VSIG for Giovanni Scheme, so I can hit for 140. There is that Splash Energy, and Moonlight Slash, of course, for 80. I'm expecting 80 damage in this situation. And this has just happened. So, I can heal 30 damage because I'm also the same type as my opponent. And I can hit him for 20 more with my Giovanni scheme right there. So, I can do maximum 100 and 40 damage right there, and even when he healed 30 damage off, I have another Escadrille already on my bench to be able to uh, knock out his Greninja and actually win this matchup. So right now you can see how good actually this Escadrille deck is. The truth is that my opponent was not able actually to set up the best, but you have plenty of options, plenty of different attackers, plenty of different combinations, and plenty of different strategies to use with this deck. And uh, it definitely feels very good to play with it, especially because it's built on budget. And when you actually uh, build something on budget that actually beats something that is tired one deck, uh, the feeling is just amazing. So there is 30 damage heal. And pretty much you can just knock out my um, Escadrille right there, but that's pretty much all. So there's even Super Potion. Luckily I have v Seeker for another Giovanni scheme. That Super Potion was just a big deal. Because without that... Um, actually, if I didn't have chance to uh, play my uh, v Seeker for Giovanni scheme, my opponent would probably do much more um, problems to me right here uh, with that super potion I should definitely say that that potion just wow I don't know what to say about that if he can get maybe another max potion uh, super potion he can scrap more damage counters from his um, Greninja break but even getting that max potion oh boy that would be just devastating so there's a shadow stitching for 40 um, that means that uh, I can heal actually 30, which is just funny. And this is pretty much GG because I have another V Seeker in my hand. I mean, I got like four V Seekers in my hand and I can just use that Giovanni scheme, which will actually give me the opportunity to knock out my opponent Greninja break with my Match Club Escadrille and actually finish this game uh, by victory. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. It was definitely a very interesting match to watch. So I managed to beat that Greninja Break deck. So once again, there is a full deck list. So if you're looking to build something like that, you can definitely use my deck list um, as the guide. So don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more future videos. Let me know what you think about this deck. And yeah, that's pretty much all for today. So till the next time, have a nice day and uh, goodbye.